Hey guys, it's your friend John. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make very easy tiger claws that you can make at home with everyday items. All you need is a long broom handle and some nails. So first step, you're going to want to measure it. So take your roller, and you want to measure to whatever what you think is comfortable. For me, I'm going to do about five and a half inches. And you just draw some lines. And you follow those lines all the way around. So you get a nice even cut. Second, I'm going to use a handsaw so I have more control. And you just cut these little ends off. Next, draw three dots where you're going to drill your holes. Make sure that your dots are spread out evenly. After you're done marking where you're going to want to drill those holes, you take a drill bit that matches closely to the nail. So make sure you don't drill to the table, put a block of wood down and put your handle down so you don't drill in and then hit the table. Make sure that when you're drilling, you drill straight. You don't want your holes to be crooked. So make sure that your drill is straight and not crooked. And then you put your nails in. See how it looks. It's getting there. Not done. Needs a little more work. Once you're done drilling all three of your holes and you put your nails in, as you can see, these nails stick out, but this one doesn't. And I did that on purpose. Because when I grab it like this, these two bumps are a little uncomfortable, where this is a lot more comfortable. So these bumps, I want down like that one. So I'm going to take my drill with this drill bit, I believe this is a metal drilling drill bit. I like using it for wood. Unfortunately, I do not know the name. And you basically just take this drill bit and you just widen these holes a little. And now they're all in and it's a lot more comfortable. I don't have to deal with those bumps hitting my hand. So the next step is glue. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pour glue into these holes, but to make sure that the glue doesn't pour out through the other side, make sure you tape all back here so the glue doesn't drip out these bottom holes. And make sure when you tape it, the tape is nice and secure and all the way wrapped around with just the holes exposed. Another thing, to stop these nails from moving all independently, tape them all together so they all move as one and not all as separate pieces. Now we're going to add the glue. And just pour the glue right in these holes.
You don't have to use wood glue. You can use any glue that you think is better than this brand. And you just let the glue dry. I also forgot to mention to stop it from rolling, make sure you put pliers or something to anchor it so it doesn't roll around. Now once the glue is dry, it could be considered done if you wanted it to, but there's a few problems with that for me. Number one, this is exposed and, and if I were to punch down and if I were to punch down, over time, these nails could get uh, pushed out. So what I want to do is I want to add some form of backing on it. I know this isn't very pretty. That's okay. I'm going to sand it down and make it look pretty once it's on here. So I'm going to screw this on so it doesn't get pulled out. Another thing, even though it's dry, these nails are still a little loose because there's not a lot of I guess you say anchor point. So I got me another handle and I drilled some holes in it. And oops. and if I do this, it kind of makes it more stable and it makes it a little more comfortable. So by doing this and like that, like I said, this is going to get sanded down so this will be uh, less bulky. It's more comfortable and it feels more solid. But again, you could just leave it like that, especially if you have shorter nails. These nails are very long. Now, if you are going to do this way, what I recommend doing is pre-drilling holes where these screws will go in. I did on this one as well and on this one as well. You can see the pre-drilled holes. Make sure that the screws were really in there. I added glue in the holes and in the screws so the screws would be securely in the holes. Next, we're going to pour glue in these holes and in these cracks to secure it and make it final. Probably watching this video and being like, Man, John, you really love glue. What can I say? I'm a glue guy. And let that go down. Once your glue is in there, clean it off with a wet rag so it's not messy. If you have to add more glue, add more glue. Once your glue is 100% hardened, you can see that the nails are really in there. So what I want to do next, and I probably should have did this earlier, I want to sharpen these nails a little bit because as you can see, they're a little dull. So I want to make them a little sharper. And I'm going to do it with a hand file. Once you're done rounding these edges off and making it sharper, next you're going to want to sand this because this is a little bulky and blocky. So I'm going to now sand this down 
and you can use a hand file or a belt sander to round this off. I'm going to use a belt sander to round this off. And another thing, if you do sand these nails down to make them more rounded and sharp, I recommend doing it before you glue it in. Um, basically, it's easier to do one nail at a time. It's a lot easier to take a file and have a separate nail and sand it this way than it is with this and doing it that way. Alright, so we're done sanding it and it's a lot more rounded and it's a lot more comfortable. So now that it's nice and comfortable, I'm going to give it a good strength test and see how strong it really is. So we got a, we got a block of wood right here. And I'm going to strike it repeatedly to see if these nails get any looser. a lot of damage. The nails are still in there good. Next is the sharpness test. I have a big foam block. I got some cardboard. And I got an old dirty rag. So we got cardboard, foam, dirty rag. We're going to see how easily it goes in. It in pretty well, a little resistant, but nothing bad. So this will definitely go in a body. So I'm really happy the way it came out. The only downside, it is a little bulky in the hands, but it does make it more secure and it's less likely to roll. I have a good grip on it. And honestly, all that's left is to paint it and I think we're done. So yeah, uh, one could say that I really nailed it with these tiger claws. I've also forgot to mention, make sure you sand down everything. If it's not sanded, paint will peel. So make sure you sand all the nails, sand the nails, and sand the wood. So when you do spray paint it, it sticks really nicely. Before you paint it, right when you're done sanding it down, make sure you get a nice damp rag and you clean the whole thing off, get all that dirt off, get all that dust off, and once it's done drying, then you paint it. So as you can see, it's nice and done and painted. This is a pretty easy weapon to make if you're starting out. You could make a weapon similar to this in design and style. You can use long nails or short nails, the option's yours. Also, this is not the first tiger claws i would ever made or tiger claw-like weapon. I have made others in the past, as you can see. And I'll probably make another tiger cloth later on as time goes by because I kind of do like this weapon. It's nice. It's comfortable. The only thing I have to complain is it is a little bulky in my hands, but it does give it a good solid grip. My hands are size medium, so if you have small hands, it might be a little uncomfortable. If you have large hands, it should fit right in, but someone like me, it's fair. Uh, it's very strong. It, nails are in there really good. I like the color all flat black. And uh, 
I actually like this weapon, but you want to know what? I'm just bragging on and on and on. I think you get the point I'm trying to make. But that's the end of the video. So please make sure you share the video, you subscribe to my channel, you like the video, you join my community, you follow me. I'm going to leave all the information at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.